After an opening week that already had MLB fans questioning what they know, week two in the league treated fans to crazy comebacks. Swanson knocks in two, and the Cubs have hung another snowman. It is eight nothing. Here's Fernando. Electric performances. High fly ball, deep left field. Varsho back, turning, looking, see ya. And stars being stars. This one in the air to left field, and it is way out of here. It's only April, but things are already heating up in the MLB. Here's everything that went down in week two. Chapter one, let the kids play. Our story of week two begins in Kauffman Stadium where the Royals would host seven straight games. The Royals lost both of their week one series, but with the AL's worst White Sox coming to town, it looked like a great opportunity for a bounce back. And bounce back they did with a four game sweep over Chicago. But again, it's only the White Sox and a much tougher opponent was about to come to town in the Houston Astros. MJ Melendez, Vinny Pasquantino, and of course Bobby Witt Jr. are powering the current best offense in the American League. On the mound, Brady Singer and Cole Reagans are off to fantastic starts, helping the Royals to a perfect 7-0 week. New talent would also be shining in Cincinnati as Ellie De La Cruz was doing things nobody's ever seen. His last time up. First pitch, center field. Freelick was deep coming up. He slides, it gets by. De La Cruz can fly. He storms to second. Cherry gathers edge of the track. Windmill is on. Relay to the plate. De La Cruz. Then in Boston, the young and exciting Orioles were in town. Number one overall prospect Jackson Holiday was getting all the attention, but it was the other Baltimore youngsters who did all the work. Gunnar Henderson, Jordan Westberg, and Colton Kowser powered the O's to a sweep over the Red Sox. Chapter 2. Kept Promises The Cubs enter 2024 with higher expectations and renewed optimism for playoff success, but no team is a better test than when the Dodgers come to town. The Cubbies had something to prove and took it all out on Dodger pitching. Shoto Imanaga pitched well once again and shut the Dodgers down in Game 3 to earn the series win. Something is brewing in Chicago. Cody Bellinger and Seiya Suzuki look ready to lead a playoff charge, and players like Michael Bush are only adding to what looks like a promising start for the Cubbies. After their first series loss of the season, the Dodgers would head to the road for an interleague matchup with the Twins. LA didn't seem phased in the slightest, as they quickly took care of business in Minnesota, getting contributions from sources both likely. Last one in the air to deep left field. Martin's going back. Back pedal into the wall. It's gone! Shohei Otani! And unlikely. Hammers this ball. Deep center field. Buxton going back. Goodbye! James Altman finds it in Minneapolis. To cruise to a series win. Chapter 3. Leading the way. The Guardians continued their hot start this week with two more series wins under their belt. The bullpen seemed absolutely untouchable, and the entire lineup is contributing. Even when trailing 5-0 to the White Sox, the Guardians never looked too worried. They just let the Naylor brothers take over on National Siblings Day. First time up. There's a got that drive, deep center field. It's not coming back all the way into the bullpen. To one, White Sox leading, and Naylor drives one deep center. This has a chance. Out of here! Back come the Guardians on one swing of the bat by Bo Naylor. Josh hits one up the alley, deep left field. That's going to get down and tie the game. Scoring is Jimenez. And into second now with the winning run is Josh Naylor. Throw here. Line drive, base hit, game winner. Bo Naylor with his third run batted into the night. And the Guardians take the series. Cleveland has a top five pitching staff in the league so far. And with how easily they took care of two AL Central opponents this week, the Guardians are the favorites to take the division in 2024. In the NL Central, the Pirates hosted a tough interleague opponent in the Baltimore Orioles. Pittsburgh has developed a knack for starting the season hot, and that trend looks to continue in 2024. 
Under the radar pirate additions Joey Bart and Marco Gonzalez help contribute to a series win with O'Neill Cruz putting the exclamation point. Here's Cruz. Line drive right field. That will do it. Or should do it. Here comes the throw. Henry Davis is safe. Raise the Jolly Roger in 11 innings. The Pirates are tied atop the NL Central and look to keep their winning ways going past April this season. The team tied with the Pirates is the Milwaukee Brewers. Most people wrote this team off when they traded Corbin Burns to Baltimore, but apparently they were just getting started. William Contreras is making a case that he is the best catcher in the league. In scoring position. And that one is way back. Contreras sends it deep and gone! Two-run home run for Contreras. And Christian Yelich is playing like it's a 2018 encore. Yelich, a high drive! Way back in the right! Goodbye! Four to three Brewers on a bomb from Yelich! Combine that with emerging young players up and down the lineup, and the Brewers look like the favorites to win the wide open NL Central. The pitching staff is the question mark, but so far, veterans like Wade Miley and Colin Ray are doing enough to let the offense bring home wins. Chapter 4, Turning It Around No team in the league has done less with more than the New York Mets in recent years. After cutting payroll and starting this season 1-5, it seemed like the Mets were going to roll over and die and just wait for 2025. The Mets came to Cincinnati with morale no doubt low, but veteran starters Jose Quintana and Sean Manaya basically willed the team to a series victory, despite the Mets' bats not doing much at all. But in their next series, the Mets would need the bats to come to play as they took on the Atlanta Braves. The Braves immediately sucker punched New York, taking a four-run lead by the third inning in Game 1. The series looked over even though it had just begun, but to everyone's surprise, the Mets struck back. This thing. Nibble hooks one to deep right field, forget that, that'll tie the game. Brandon Nimmo into the chop house. And on the back of Brandon Nimmo doing his best Acuna impersonation. Ninth pitch of the bat from Chavez, and he lines one toward the middle, base hit. McNeil around third, heading home. Harris's throw to the plate is cut off, throw to third, and Taylor is safe. Nemo drives in his fifth run of the night. The Mets took game one. In the rubber match of the series, maybe the Mets found some new confidence as the team steamrolled the Braves with every single player in the lineup getting at least one hit. Maybe it's just a fluke series win, but the Mets look renewed and may just find a way to perform the one year the front office has thrown in the towel. On the other side of the country, the Nationals came to town to visit the Giants. The Nats have little to no expectations for 2024, but the team actually has some exciting things going on. Lane Thomas was a nice surprise last year, and he's trying to prove 2023 wasn't a fluke season. But the main attraction is Padre Castaway, C.J. Abrams. He has begun to look like he's realizing his potential, and at only 23 could be the next face of the Nationals. Abrams was able to will the Nats to their first series win of the year, but if his breakout is all that comes out of 2024, I think Washington and its fans would take it. No team was a bigger laughing stock than the A's after opening week. A bad baseball team has never received so much coverage, and despite the public anger being mostly toward the front office and ownership, the players have received plenty of the criticism as well. But this week, seemingly to the realization of nobody, the A's played some pretty good baseball, winning a series in Detroit before heading to Texas to face the reigning world champs. Zach Geloff has continued his strong 2023 season into this year, and Shea Langoliers looks to be emerging into a superstar. J.P. Sears capped off the series win over the Rangers, carrying a no-hitter into the seventh. The fans have already dismissed this team, and so has the ownership, but the players on the field haven't given up. At least not yet. Chapter 5. Expectations The Rays have developed the reputation of being able to consistently take underwhelming rosters and deliver overwhelming results. But many people were writing them off before the season, and after a rough start in 2024, it seemed the injuries to the pitching staff would be too much to overcome. But anyone who's been paying attention knows to never count the Rays out. Tampa can seemingly pull new, effective pitchers at will, and Zach Littell, Aaron Savale, and Zach Eflin all did enough this week to clinch series wins against both the Rockies and the Angels. The offense has come up with some new producers as well, with Isak Paredes, Jose Caballero, and Jose Siri complementing the already established veterans. Meanwhile in Philadelphia, the Phillies are looking to get back to the NLCS in a year that feels like a make it or break it season. Nobody in the lineup is exactly lighting the world on fire, but contributions from guys like Alec Bohm and Brandon Marsh was just enough to help the pitching staff get series wins over the Nationals and Cardinals. 
Despite not quite yet hitting their form, the Phils sit in second in the NL East, right in the middle of the playoff hunt. The D-backs snuck into the playoffs last year, and if they would have lost in the wild card round, things for this team might look a lot different. But the team's Cinderella run to the World Series caused expectations to skyrocket for 2024, and I'm not sure if the team is ready for it. After losing to the Yankees last week, a three-game sweep by the Braves made many question if this team was a playoff team. A loss to the Rockies on Monday extended the losing streak to five games. The D-backs had a nice bounce-back win in Game 2, but the team found themselves trailing late into Game 3. Staring into the face of a third consecutive series loss, the D-backs had to decide if the pressure of expectation is too high or if this is just the start of the fight. Lertis shoots it deep. Here goes Corbin. That ball gets down out there. Corbin Carroll coming around. He's going to tie the ball game. And there's the big hit after all. He is in there. Two on and two out for Suarez. Suarez reaches out. Going to be a long run for Nolan Jones on the move. He won't get there. Marte is home. They will wave Walker. Here comes Christian. He will score. And Gino Suarez with a two-run double in its five three Diamondbacks. Here we go. Three and two on Jake Cave. Ball. Four. And now they're loaded up for Jones. Here's the pitch. And this one hit in the air to center. Carroll underneath it. He will make the catch. And the ball game is over. Diamondbacks win it by a final score of 5-3. to three. They take the series two games to one against the Rockies.